welcome to the channel. I'm back to break down this nine game NBA DFS slate on DraftKings and FanDuel. Excited to get into the breakdown before we do. Quick reminder, as always, if you do enjoy the content at any point in this video, if you could please take a moment to leave a like on this video, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you don't miss any future content that I upload. That would be greatly appreciated. I'll be here all NBA DFS season long, breaking down these NBA DFS slates to help you guys become better NBA DFS players. Help you guys win some money night in and night out. And I have been going live as well around 5.30 p.m. Eastern. If you're interested in going in joining the live stream, that I'll be going up until 6.30. Going over some changes. Those have been fun and interactive. So I'm looking forward to continuing to do those as much as possible. And lastly, if you are getting very serious about NBA DFS, I would highly recommend my NBA DFS premium package. It's linked below in the description. You get access to all of my projections, advanced player metrics, core plays, offense half-court putbacks tool, defense half-court putbacks tool, offense and defensive transition tools, all of that fun stuff. Well worth your money. I think you're going to win your money back that you pay for the package very quickly. So I would highly recommend it. And don't forget to stay tuned to the end of the video for my lock of the night. So, with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and start getting into the breakdown. As always, we're going to go game by game here. First game on the slate, we have Brooklyn taking on Detroit. Kyrie Irving continues to be out. Other than that, we're not really dealing with any other injury news outside of the fact that Nicholas Claxton is out on the Brooklyn side, but he's been out for quite some time. And so, like I said, Nothing really has changed too much on either side here. This game right now comes in with a total of 212 with a 10-point spread in favor of the Brooklyn Nets. So the Brooklyn Nets expected to win this one fairly easily. Blowout concerns are always a thing. And this game is going to be played at a pretty low pace, expected at 212. I will say last night that Philly-Detroit game was the lowest pace game on the slate. I really wasn't that high on it, and then it seemed to absolutely go off, so... Yeah, I'm not really sure if these Vegas lines are really dialed in with this new style of play. If you're not aware, the NBA just decided to like not call fouls this year. It's a completely different type of play than what we've been accustomed to. And at this point, I'm starting to think we might have to factor it into our lineup. So, But anyways, it's going to be Kevin Durant and James Harden on the Brooklyn side of things that have the highest upside by far. They're the ones going to be the ones that have all the usage in the world. So they're the ones with the highest upside and the ones that you're looking to play on the Brooklyn side of things. And then if this game's going to stay close, it's probably going to be through the likes of Jeremiah Grant, Sadiq Bey, and Cade Cunningham. They're really the three guys I'll be looking to on this Detroit side that uh, we certainly want to have interest in. Sadiq Bey, though, has taken a serious step back um, since the beginning of the season where he was really on fire. He was really looking good. And now it's just he's really struggling to shoot. He's not scoring 3 for 9, 2 for 13 the last two times off, 4 for 17 the time before. I think it's just a matter of time before he can get it going. And then the same is going to be said for Jeremiah Grant and Cade Cunningham. Jeremiah Grant's been pretty consistent himself. Cade Cunningham having his first big game last time out. He has seen a slight price increase to 4-6, whereas he was only 4K, but he put up 39 DraftKings points last time out. At that 4-6 price tag, that's still going to be uh, plenty of fantasy points if he's able to go up there and put up 40. And he shot 1 for 7 from behind the arc, so... If he's able to knock down some threes, this guy has some serious upside very clearly. Um, he could go up there and put up 50, and he's still underpriced on DraftKings specifically. So those are kind of the main candidates in this first game. Washington is taking on Memphis. going to be the second game on the slate. I think this one could surely be a shootout. Should be up tempo. I think that both sides have been struggling quite a bit defensively. So that's always something to take into account. And then we are looking at the total of this game right now. This game comes in with a 225.5 over under. That is the... Second highest total on the slate with a one point spread in favor of the Washington Wizards. And like I said, I think it's going to be plenty of usage to go around. Dylan Brooks continues to be out. Thomas Bryant, Rui Hachimura continue to be out. So um, on the Memphis side of things, one thing I'll immediately say is I want to continue to target these guys in this mid range for Memphis, DeAnthony Melton. And Desmond Bain, specifically, at their respective price tags, are just too cheap for their roles, their minutes, their upside. I think that DeAnthony Melton at 5'4", specifically, could easily blow that price tag out of the water on DraftKings. So I'm really going to like DeAnthony Melton tonight. And he's grading out as a great play for me, as well as Kyle Anderson, as well. He's only 5K over here on... Uh, I'm sorry, only 5K on FanDuel. And he makes a lot of sense for me on FanDuel, does Kyle Anderson, uh, where... 
if I'm looking to get some exposure to this game. But also on DraftKings, he's only 4-3. So both sites, really, Kyle Anderson seems to be a little bit underpriced here. His minutes have been a little bit capped, though. So I, I would take that with caution. This is my first run on projections. I wouldn't be surprised to see that changed, honestly, as far as where I have him right now. Um, and yeah, his minutes just seem to be getting cut by Desmond Bain and Anthony Mountain, like I said. So those are really the two guys you look to. And then on Washington side, it's pretty straightforward. I mean, John Morant, obviously, also at 9-4 and Jaron Jackson Jr. That's kind of the core of this team. Um, Jaron Jackson Jr. also only 5-6. Um, could easily surpass that price tag. We saw him do it last time out. He put up 42 draft points, points. And he continues to be a little underpriced here. The only thing you're worried about with him is going to be the foul trouble that he could sometimes get himself in. But then you got Bradley Beal, Ja Morant, Spencer Denwitty, Kyle Kuzma on the Washington side. It's really easy. All of the usage, all of the offense flows through these guys in Denwitty, Kuzma, and Beal. So you're really looking to go to them. And as far as Mr. Montrez Harrell, as of late, he's finally been getting the minutes he deserves. Been playing right around 30 minutes a game. Um, after starting the season out as kind of a guy that took a back seat. Um, he's finally getting the minutes that he deserves. And then we're seeing Daniel Gafford not play quite as many minutes. But it'll be interesting to see if that remains the truth or if they start to ramp his minutes up a little bit more. Um, and he had a quad injury is the thing. So that's what I'm a little bit nervous about, whether they're going to start ramping his minutes back up when he's kind of good to go. But for the time being, I think you could still go ahead and play plenty of Montrez Harrell. And I think he's a pretty good play here on this slate tonight. And I think this is a pretty good game environment. So certainly going to have some exposure to this game. Another guy you could possibly look into would be KCP, Catavius Caldwell-Pope at only 3-6 in this game. Um, but he's not really the best permanent producer. He's only putting up... 0.63 DraftKings points per minute. And for that reason, I'm not too sure that I'm getting too, too excited to be playing him, although he has been playing in the mid-30s minutes, and he could certainly have a big game on any given night in this game environment where it could happen. So I just want to point him out. San Antonio Spurs take it on the Orlando Magic. This game right now comes in with a total of 212 over under, four-point spread in favor of the San Antonio Spurs. Not exactly expected to be the best-paced game in the world. However, with that being said, I continue to really like targeting this um, Orlando team. They've been absolutely terrible defensively on the season. Looking at my defense transition tool, Orlando ranks 30th in all transition points per possession rank and points per possession in transition. So they are not good at not getting the job done defensively as far as transition is concerned. And for that reason, I think the guys that are pushing the ball... DeJounte Murray on the San Antonio Spurs side. The guys that are getting the most minutes. Could certainly be intriguing plays. Derek White as well at the, the guard position at 6-1. Could certainly have a big upside game here. And then Kelvin Johnson and Lonnie Walker. Um, as well as... Uh, lastly, well Lonnie Walker's been not getting that too many minutes. But lastly, you have some Vassal down here. You do have some more minutes being handed out with um, Jakob Podol being hurt now. At the center spot, we're seeing some more minutes for Drew Eubanks at 4-2. So there's plenty of value to be had on the San Antonio Spurs side. And then on the Orlando side, the good news is, although it's going to be a slow-paced game, we know exactly what to run it back with. Cole Anthony, Bo, Mo Bamba, and Wendell Carter Jr., those three guys really kind of suffocating this Orlando usage, really kind of soaking it all up, which isn't a bad thing when it comes to fantasy because we know exactly where it's going. And then lastly, you do have Jalen Suggs as well, who kind of, is in that realm a little bit. He hasn't had quite the high upside games, but those are the guys I'd be looking to. Terrence Ross continues to be a guy that I'm hoping can pop off eventually. He continues to pop in my model, playing upwards to 30 minutes. He hasn't had a big game yet, but Terrence Ross at 3.9 is just underpriced. And he's definitely someone that looks pretty good in my projection model. And he's someone I've played a bunch in the past in NBA DFS and has paid off very well. He's got a long track record of being able to get the job done, but just so far on the season, kind of taking a back seat. It's only a matter of time before he has a big game, I would think. The New York Knicks taking on the Milwaukee Bucks. Chris Milton continues to be out. Brooke Lopez continues to be out. Dante DiVincenzo continues to be out. Drew Holiday is expected to play and is listed as probable. And Drew Holiday is looking very good in my projections. If he's a full go, if we don't get any news that he's somewhat limited, um, he's looking really good. He's only 6'5 on DraftKings on FanDuel. He's only... Uh, let's see, 7-3, and like I said, if he's able to play like mid-30s minutes, that just makes him an obvious play on the slate tonight. I would certainly have a bunch of interest in him. 
and I'd be loading him up in my lineups if he is good to go. So, um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. We're going to have to keep an eye on that injury news. And then moving further along, so that's obviously going to impact Giannis a little bit in this game. Not make him quite as much of a fantasy point for Beast, for Minute Beast, because he's going to be sharing a little bit more usage. This game does have a 217.5 over under. Five point spread in favor of the Milwaukee Bucks, so expect to stay close. And the good news is, I think it's all going to be Drew Holiday, Giannis Antetokounmpo on the Milwaukee side. You can really lock in that usage. And then, as far as from the big man aspect, Bobby Portis at 4'7, I think, continues to be a great play as well. Saw him play up to 22 minutes last time. They've been slowly working it back. He's getting more and more minutes every time out. He's a fantasy point beast. I'm really looking forward to continuing to play him, hopefully, uh, with there being no Brooke Lopez in there. I think he can continue to really shine. And they might need his services a little bit more than you would think with guys like Julius Randle, R.J. Barrett slashing to the rim. They're going to need some defense. Um, and next to Giannis down low with a little bit of a bigger price, uh, a little bit of a bigger presence in their lineup. So I certainly think that makes a little bit of sense. And another guy I'm interested to keep my eyes on on the New York side is going to be Alec Burks. I really want to keep my eyes on his minutes because I think he's just 200 price over here on DraftKings at only 3-2. He's been played right around 20 minutes last time out. Times before, though, it's been right around like 17. So his upside is somewhat limited as far as his minutes, but he's only 3-2. So he could get you there as a kind of a deeper tournament dart throw play. And then... Kemba Walker and Evan Fournier continue to be underpriced as well. Kemba Walker is only 5'9". He's a starting point guard. I'm not really sure why they continue to not want to price him up. And then Evan Fournier could certainly surpass his 5'6 price tag as well in this one. Then, of course, the two pit top payup options are Giannis and Julius Randle in this game. Both guys have some tremendous upside if you decide that we have the value and you really want to go there for the time being. As far as how they're grading out in my model on drafting specifically Giannis does look pretty good um but as far as my desire to go to Julius Randle right now I'm not too too sure he's going to be a big priority for me so that's just the first look though Cleveland taking on Toronto going to be the next game on the slate Pascal Siakam continues to be out Lori Marketing continues to be out on the Cleveland side of things so that's going to open up a lot more minutes for Chetty Osmond Denzel Valentine and of course Probably some more usage for the young rookie and Evan Mobley. He's a little bit disappointing last time out. A lot of people were excited to see what he could do. Played 40 minutes, only put up 26 DraftKings points, but I think he could bounce back in this one. He has been producing at a very high rate, putting up up to 40 DraftKings points in many of these games. Having, after having a bit of a down game, maybe his ownership's not quite as high. And then on the Cleveland side of things, I mean, sorry, on the Toronto side of things, we know their rotation is pretty locked down, good in where the minutes are going. It's only a 212 and a half over under. Six points spread in favor of Toronto. But, like I said, with Siakam being out, uh, Scotty Barnes is expected to return in this one, though, so that's going to impact the rotation a bit. With him being out, that's really locked in the minutes for guys like, and the usage for guys like Anunoby, Fred Van Vliet, um, and Gary Trent Jr., etc. Achiua, Svi Mikhailuk took a big bump up. He's going to take a step back now. Uh, but... With that being said, this minutes rotation is still going to be really locked in. Toronto is one of the easiest teams to target because you just know they're going to get their minutes. Van Vliet, OG on um, Scotty Barnes, and Gary Trent Jr. All obvious plays for me as far as uh, they're locked into their minutes and their upside is certainly there. Playing 34, 35, 40 minutes, all these guys are. So certainly pretty easy to be targeting Toronto and feeling good about it. And then running it back with Evan Mobley, Jared Allen, Darius Garland, Colin Sexton, with there being no Laurie Markkinen. All of these guys very clearly um, getting their usage in minutes as well. So this game's actually, while it's not the fastest paced game in the world, certainly very straightforward as far as the rotations are concerned. And we can certainly appreciate that uh, from a fantasy aspect because it's never fun dealing with that. Kevin Love continues to be out as well on the Cleveland side. Uh, so Cleveland's minutes are going to be certainly locked in. And for that reason, you could certainly be getting some exposure to that game. Next game, the LA Clippers taking on the Minnesota Timberwolves. D'Angelo Russell continues to be out in this one. That's going to give a big bump up in usage to Anthony Edwards specifically. Going to give some more usage to Malik Beasley and some more usage to Carl Anthony Towns, as well as make Patrick Beverly the starting point guard. Went out there and had a big game last time out. 36 DraftKings points at his price tag. That just continues to be too cheap. And he gets a little bit of a revenge narrative here, taking on his former team in the LA Clippers. So Patrick Beverly, I think, would certainly be a guy that falls under the vengeful category he's kind of a 
one to really show his emotion out there on the court. So he's a guy that I would certainly like tonight. Carl Anthony Towns, like I said, should get a bump up in usage with there being no DeAndre Russell as well. He hasn't had the biggest game in the world yet, but I think it's just a matter of time. And then Paul George on the Clippers side continues to be an absolute usage beast with there being no Kawhi Leonard. So really like the core plays of this game. You know, Anthony Edwards, Carl Anthony Towns, Paul George. We know exactly where the usage is going. Reggie Jackson on the Clippers side, I think, continues to play very well. He put up 51 draft cleans points last time out. Nicholas Batum continues to get minutes. Uh... 33 and 34 DraftKings points. He's too cheap at only 4-6. Terrence Mann, Luke Kennard, uh, all these guys really could qualify as good plays on this slate. They all have upside. I think this should be a pretty decent game environment. Malik Beasley certainly going to get more minutes with there being no D'Angelo Russell. I think it's just a matter of time before he has a big game. He hasn't had really that big, big game yet, but Eric Bledsoe. Uh, yeah, you get the point, but specifically Paul George and Anthony Edwards, those two guys in this game really making a lot of sense to me. Uh, both getting a bunch of on-ball usage, both getting a bunch of usage overall, and both going to be great plays tonight. New Orleans Pelicans taking on the Golden State Warriors. This game right now, as far as the total, comes in with a total of a 219.5 over under, 9-point spread in favor of the Golden State Warriors. The Golden State Warriors are expected to win this game fairly easily. Brandon Ingram is listed as questionable for Friday. He's missed each of the last three games due to a hip contusion. I tend to think he's finally going to be back in this one. Might be wrong, but... If he's back, obviously that's going to impact the rotation, the usage quite a bit. Jonas Valanciunas, uh, Devontae Graham, the Keel Alexander Walker are all going to take hits in their usage, and they become far less likely uh, plays for me. I'm not going to have nearly the interest as I did with Ingram being out, but we have to wait on that news. If he's out, these guys are all going to be great plays. Jonas Valanciunas, regardless, I think is going to continue to be a great play. Unfortunately, he continues to see his price tag climb because he's been an absolute beast, but. They're starting to make us kind of have to think about it a little bit on whether we want to play him or not. So that's obviously, I mean, not a bad thing. Might lower his ownership if you really like him in this spot. But um, certainly not quite as easy to lock in. And with these guys returning, these rotations are going to become a little bit more difficult to target. Stephen Curry is priced all the way up to 11.4. Like, that's just a really high price tag for the production he's been putting out. Of course, he's always got the upside, but honestly, I don't really think I have that much interest in Steph Curry at 11-4 until his price tag comes down. I think I'd rather play some guys that are priced a little bit more, like, let's look at the slate. Um, Steph Curry at 11-4. I'd rather play Giannis at 11-8 for only 400 more. Um, Paul George at 10-4 is the sole kind of main leader on his team with the Clippers not having Kawhi Leonard. And the Golden State Warriors have a bunch of other guys they can go to, so I think I'd much rather play Paul George for a thousand cheaper. John Morant at nine four, I think is has just as much upside as Steph Curry, if not more, in that matchup. So I'm not really sure that I'm too high on Steph and Curry, to be honest. Ironically, and then like I said, you have uh, Draymond Green, Andrew Wiggins, Jordan Poole, all digging into his usage. So I think I'd rather go down to a cheaper guy in this Golden State Warriors side, like an Andrew Wiggins, like a Jordan Poole. They're only 6-2 and 5-8, and they're getting plenty of usage, and they could certainly surpass it pretty easily here. So that would be my approach. And then, like I said, we're waiting on the Pelicans news. If Ingram's out, that's going to make Josh Hart continue to be a great play as well. Devontae Graham to kill Alexander Walker. If he's back, that's going to take a hit to all those guys. Charlotte taking on Sacramento. LaMelo Ball is listed as questionable in this one, but he is more so probable, so we expect him to be able to go at his 8-9 price tag. This game right now has a great game environment. It comes in with a 227 over-under. I believe this is, I think this is the highest over-under we've seen on the season so far. We haven't seen anything anywhere near close to 230. So I'm certainly going to be taking note of this game. It's certainly going to be an exciting one. The only problem really is the health of these teams and the depth of these teams. Because when you're looking at their lineups up and down, there's certainly a lot of guys that could be digging into each other's usage a bit. Fox, Halliburton, Barnes, Holmes, Buddy Heal, Davian Mitchell off the bench for the Kings. And then on the Hornets side, LaMelo Ball, Terry Rozier, Gordon Hayward, Miles Bridges, um, Kelly Oubre off the bench. So both teams pretty deep, but this is a fast, fast-paced game, guys, compared to some of the totals we've been seeing. So this is something we have to take note of because nothing's been even close to this on the season. Um, from a first look aspect, as far as the plays that are really standing out to me in this game, Davian Mitchell continues to be a great play at 3-8 on DraftKings. He continues to be too cheap. 
He was a guy that I really wasn't playing early on the season because his fantasy point production just didn't look like it was going to be there. Now it's up to about 0.71 DK points per minute. Still not the greatest in the world, but he's pushing like 30 DraftKings points a game as of late, and he's only 3.8. So Davian Mitchell popping right away for me in this game for sure. And then P.J. Washington at only his 4.9 price tag is another guy I'm kind of wanting to take a look at here from a strictly upside for his price tag. He is listed as questionable, and he is more so doubtful, though. So he's probably not going to be in there yet. Uh, he's a guy that I would have been getting excited to play, but he's not going to be in. So, uh, But yeah, on the Charlotte side, really simple as far as the upside guys. It's Lamella Ball. It's Miles Bridges. These guys both really dominating in the early going. Miles Bridges specifically has been very impressive, putting up 45, 56, 43, 38, 41, 45, 53, 46 drafting points, just consistently putting up 45 plus, it seems. And now he gets to go into one of the best game environments on the slate. And one of the best in game environments on the year, I should say. Uh, same was going to apply for Harrison Barnes at 7-6 here. I think he's kind of underpriced. And then when we get into this range, this is where all these guys are kind of underpriced for the game environment. Gordon Hayward, Terry Rogier, Rashawn Holmes at only 6-6, or 6-7 and 6-5. I mean, both these guys will certainly blow those price tags out of the water with their upside capabilities. Buddy Heald's all the way down to 5-7 off the bench in a fast up-tempo game. Certainly going to have interest in Buddy Heald. Um, Kelly Oubre Jr. at only 5-2. He only saw 30 minutes last time out, which is a little bit weird, but he was seeing upwards to like 30 minutes. Um, and now with Terry Rozier being back, he seems to have taken a cut in his role. So that's certainly something to take note of. But I mean, these main guys, Lamella Ball, De'Aaron Fox, Miles Bridges, Harrison Barnes, Gordon Hayward, Terry Rozier, Rashawn Holmes, all these guys that have been getting consistent minutes. Halliburton at 6-1. He's playing upwards of 34, 35, 37 minutes. Um, certainly taking the role over Buddy Heald, it seems, with Buddy Heald just kind of being the sharpshooter off the bench. These guys are in a great game environment, so I think they could all reach their ceiling in this game. And it's like I said, it's not even close to what these totals have been so far in the season. It's a big total, so certainly take note of that. And lastly, Indiana taking on Portland. This game right now comes in with a total of a 223.5 over under. Another high to up-tempo game these last two games on the slate. And as far as who we're looking to go to in these games, it's Sabonis. It's Malcolm Brogdon on the Indiana side that are certainly going to dominate most of the usage. Sabonis having a very bad game last time out with only 21 points. I don't know if I've seen that from him in a, quite some time. Um, but a little bit of a blowout. So Harris LeVert being back certainly going to impact some usage on this Indiana side of things. Miles Turner and Chris Duarte as well. All these guys kind of digging into each other's usage. So we have another s scenario where... I'm not feeling too, too great about one side. And then on the Portland side, it's going to be Dame Lillard, CJ McCollum, Yusuf Nurkic. It's kind of the big three. So we know where the ball is going with them. I think that at this point, Damian Lillard just continues to be too overpriced for the way he's producing. So I'd rather go down to a CJ McCollum or a Yusuf Nurkic at their respective price tags. CJ McCollum specifically, he's only 8-1. Uh, he's producing just as good as Damian Lillard. And then lastly, Norman Powell being back is a big deal. And he put up 40 DraftKings points last time, and he continues to be underpriced. He's only 4-7. So Norman Powell is a great play for me. I mean, this guy is going to play, you know, 31 minutes I haven't projected for at a .93 DraftKings point per minute clip over a six-game sample size. Certainly have a lot of interest in Mr. Norman Powell. And then Robert Covington as well at 4-1 continues to be underpriced in this game. So he's another guy um, that you could certainly be looking to. Doesn't have the best fantasy production unfortunately at 4-1 he's only putting up 0.6 DraftKings points per game but the minutes are there he could certainly pass up this price tag on any given night if you need a punt play in your lineup so as far as FanDuel's concerned a quick little run through there see if there's any guys that I really missed of course we're going to have a lot of similarities but there are going to be some pricing discrepancies we talked about Drew Holiday at 7-3 on FanDuel if he is back in a full go he's uh, going to be a great play on both websites but on FanDuel specifically as well certainly standing out to me at his price tag, De'Aaron Fox at 7-5 on FanDuel, I think continues to be way underpriced in this fast up-tempo game environment. I'm certainly going to have a lot of interest in De'Aaron Fox. It's just too cheap. Colin Sexton at 6-4 I think is underpriced in that solidified role in Cleveland. Like I said, I think the minutes are going to be uh, pretty obvious as to where they're going in this Cleveland-Toronto game. And Colin Sexton is going to be one of those guys that's a part of it. Damian Lord at 8-5 continues to be underpriced on FanDuel. Whereas DraftKings, he's priced way up. Kemba Walker's underpriced over here at 5-5 as well. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, those are the few of the guys that are really standing out to me from a first look aspect over here on FanDuel. That seemed to be underpriced. And then also Andrew Wiggins at 6-1. We talked about the Golden State Warriors game and Andrew Wiggins 
Um, he seems to be underpriced a bit over here at 6-1. So that is my overall breakdown of this game, guys. I'll be going live at 5.30, though. Before I let you go, got to give you my lock of the night. And my lock of the night tonight is going to be De'Aaron Fox in this Sacramento-Charlotte game. The highest total on the slate. The highest total I believe I've seen all season long with a 227 over under with these new NBA rules and these totals being weighed out. This total is definitely popping off my sheet. Then when you factor in this Charlotte defense not being good so far in the season, they're the 29th overall team as far as against the point guard position. And De'Aaron Fox should be able to eat them up tonight. Putting up 0.96 DK points per minute. As far as his Fandle production, putting up 0.93 Fandle points per minute. Too cheap. Great game environment. Point guard for this team. On ball handling responsibility. Should have plenty of usage. Plenty of opportunity in this up-tempo game. Being able to get out and transition. Get you points. Get you rebounds. Get you buckets. Get you assists. He does it all. Get him in your lineups because he is my lock of the night so you have it guys the aaron fox get him in your lineups and that is all from me in this one if you do enjoy the content if you could please take a moment to leave a like on this video subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any future content that i upload that would be greatly appreciated and don't forget i will be going live at 5 30 p.m eastern time if you want to hop in there check out my premium packages if you're interested in protections and ask me questions all the way to lock in the discord that's linked below in the description wish you guys the best of luck tonight and we will see you in the next one.